Hi, everybody. In this video, we'll extend our understanding of inference procedures, confidence intervals, and hypothesis tests to problems which involve comparing two means. Now, before we dive into some examples, a little refresher about sampling distributions when we look at two means. We know that means can be added and subtracted, but how about standard deviations? We know that standard devi deviations don't add. So what you're going to see in this section is a lot of formulas where we have to add variances, like here. We have one population standard deviation, another population standard deviation. But keep in mind when we talk about random sampling, we take the standard deviation and divide it by root n. So we're going to take these formulas and square them and simplify that to here. And then to get the standard error for this combined difference, we're going to end up using this formula. So I don't want you to be scared off by the formula. See, it really just comes from adding two variances. So now let's dive into a formula, uh, into a problem rather. So does increasing the amount of calcium in our diet reduce blood pressure? Examination of a large sample of people revealed a relationship between calcium intake and blood pressure. Relationship was strongest for black men. Such observational studies do not establish causation, and researchers therefore designed a randomized comparative experiment. So here's the experiment. The subjects were 21 healthy black men who volunteered to take part in the experiment. They were randomly assigned to two groups. 10 received a calcium supplement for 12 weeks. The other received a placebo that looked identical for the 12 weeks. The experiment was double blind. Uh, the response variable is a decrease in systolic, which is the top number blood pressure for a subject after 12 weeks in millimeters of mercury. And an increase appears as a negative response, and we have the data given here. So keep in mind that we're looking for positive values here. Positive values do mean that there was a decrease. We see the numbers for the calcium group and for the placebo group. So a couple things to break down here. Uh, they were randomly assigned to two groups, these volunteers. Some received the calcium supplement and some received a placebo. And also note that our sample sizes are not equal. and They don't need to be in these problems. And the response variable here is the decrease in systolic blood pressure after the 12 weeks. Okay. So the null and alternate hypothesis, we want to compare two means. Our null hypothesis is that mu sub C equals mu sub P versus the mean of the calcium group is greater than the mean of the placebo group. And here it's very important to define what we're talking about here. Mu sub C is the true mean reduction in blood pressure for black males similar to those in the study. We want to extend to the population of men who potentially would take calcium. And mu sub P is the true mean reduction for black males similar to those in the study who take a placebo. So we're extending to the population here in our null and alternate hypothesis. And it is important that you define your variables here. All right, here's our plan. We're going to check the conditions for two sample t-tests for different difference between population means. You're going to notice, just like we've talked about before, very similar conditions. We're just swapping out parts now. Our random condition here, now I have to be careful here, the subjects were randomly assigned to treatments. We had 21 volunteers. They were randomly assigned to one of two treatment groups. So we do not have SRSs. We have one sample of men randomly assigned to treatments. Normality condition, you'll notice here I've made some box plots. We have to talk about both box plots. Both, plot, box, both box plots are roughly symmetric, have no outliers, and make sure you draw those box plots. You don't even need a number line. You can just draw a rough sketch of both box plots. And the true distributions of blood pressure reduction could be thought of as approximately normal here. It's safe to assume that here. Independence here, uh, the treatment groups are independent. We have this group here, this group here. Uh, they do not interact with each other. They don't influence each other's results. And also within those groups, the men don't influence each other, uh, each other uh, at all. So the two treatment groups are independent. And we did that because the subjects were randomly assigned to treatments. All right, here's the do. We're going to do the do two different ways here. Do is the mathematics here. First of all, list out everything you have. You can put these into your calculator. Take a minute or two now to put them into your calculator of choice. List all the things that are necessary. The mean for the um, calcium group was five. We have the standard deviation there. And the sample size is 10. Same for the placebo group. And we already see that calcium group did have a higher positive value, means that they had more of a reduction in blood pressure than the placebo group, which actually they had a, a, an increase in blood pressure throughout this experiment. Slight one. So we do want to list the statistics here. Now the formula here is somewhat messy. Here's the test statistic, but notice what we have here. We have the difference that was observed minus the null, which is no difference of zero over that standard error, which came from the formula on the second screen in this video. That does come out as 1.604. Think about standard error, that's 1.6 standard errors away from zero. We're kind of on that fringe of significance, but it doesn't feel like we're gonna be significant. And the p-value 
uh, backs that up, 0.0644. And you might be asking, okay, where do you get that p-value from? This is a section where we're very much going to rely on technology. You should be able to write that t-statistic formula out. Uh, it is really just our z-score formula in disguise. But for the most part, we are just going to use our calculator to do this, and you're going to list the appropriate output. So in a TI-84, here's how it works. You're going to do a two-sample t-test. A couple settings you have to pay attention to. First of all, uh, you do have to pick the greater than option for this particular one. Uh, that is greater than. It's just when I took the screen grab, it was overwritten there. But use the greater than one because that's the type of test we're doing here. There's also this option for pooled. Uh, without getting too in-depth, just know that you'll always say no. Um, there's a reason down the road where you might want to say yes. It's outside the scope of what we're going to do in AP Stat. Just leave pulled off. And if you do all that, you will get computer output here. And the stuff that's interesting for us and that you need to write down is uh, the test statistic, the p-value, and also notice the degrees of freedom. We have a decimal degrees of freedom. There's a rather nasty formula for degrees of freedom when we have two groups, especially when they are unequal sizes. You are not responsible for being able to compute the degrees of freedom. Let your calculator do all the walking and computing for you and just list those things with your test. So we have everything we need now to do our conclusion. I would also draw a sketch here. Here's my sketch. Uh, this is my T statistic sketch, which is centered at zero. Here's our conclusion. We weren't given an alpha, so we will use our usual 0.05. Uh, and keep in mind that we were doing a randomized experiment here. So we are attempting to prove cause and effect with what we do here. Does the calcium cause reduction in blood pressure? Two statements you need to write, because our p-value of 0.0644 is greater than our significance level of 0.05. We fail to reject the null in favor of the alternate. This means we cannot conclude that the calcium causes a mean reduction in blood pressure greater than that of a placebo for men similar to those in the study. Um, so we did see uh, a, more of a decrease, but not a statistically significant one. We cannot prove cause and effect here. Okay, um, So there's your conclusion. Um, I'm flipping around a lot here. so. Take a minute, write the conclusion down. But now we're going to switch gears to a confidence interval. Let's do the same problem through a confidence interval approach and see if we can now estimate the difference. So now we're going to look at a two sample interval for the difference between means. We're going to do a T interval here. We'll use the same data as we did before, but this time we want to estimate the difference in mean blood pressure reduction between calcium and placebo for black men similar to those in the study. So I want to know how much of a decrease we might expect by using calcium versus a placebo. Uh, the plan for the two sample T interval is similar to that. In fact, the same as it is for the hypothesis test. We need to check the randomization, normality, and independence. And fortunately here, those are the same conditions as the hypothesis test. So I won't go through them again. But for the conditions, you would have to write these all down if you were just doing the confidence interval problem. And do make sure you write down there's a two sample T interval that we're doing here. All right, so now we're going to dive into the do. We're going to construct the interval, construct a 95% confidence interval for the difference between population means. And important to note here, we're going to do it as calcium minus placebo. How much more of a difference do you get using calcium versus using placebo? So keep in mind how confidence intervals work. We have statistic plus or minus critical value times the standard deviation of the statistic. The formula is here. We're going to subtract those means plus or minus T star, and there's that standard error formula lurking around again. So plugging it all in, we have, oops, we have this guy here, taking two means, subtracted them, plus or minus, there's our standard error. And the part that's a little bit goofy here is we have a T star here. It's a little bit tricky to find that T star because I don't know what the degrees of freedom are. You have a couple choices here. If you need to put a T star there, what people often do is they will take the smaller of the two sample sizes, here 10, Subtract one, because we know degrees of freedom is one minus the sample size, and you would use degrees of freedom nine, look in a table, and find the appropriate T-star. However, we're going to let our calculator do the walking here, so you do not need to fill out a T-star for what we do here. We're just going to dive right into the calculator. Here we are doing a two-sample T-interval. Ignore that red box for now. That's going to circle our confidence interval right here. Doing a two-sample T-interval. Again, we're not pooling, but very simply, it gives us the confidence interval here. Okay. So you should be proficient with what the formula looks like, but also be able to put it into your calculator because quite frankly, your calculator is an easier way to go. Here's our conclusion, and it must be about the population here. And this is a little bit tough to word. Keep in mind that we're trying to compare the difference between the two treatments. We're 95% confident that the true difference between mean reduction in blood pressure for black men, similar to those in the study who take calcium versus those who take placebo is between negative 1.7 
and as high as 12.257. Okay, so that would be a good conclusion. The difference between the two population means. Last thing we're going to look at is what if you were asked, is there a significant difference? And only do this piece if you're asked. What we're looking for here is zero captured by the interval. And zero is captured by the interval. Since zero is captured by the interval, we cannot conclude that there is a true difference in blood pressure reduction between these two treatments. Zero is a plausible value. It could very well be that there is no difference. We won't con conclude there's no difference, um, but zero is captured by the interval. So tests, intervals, or means, and you're all set to go.